This is Wayne Rogers from Gold Tone, and I'd like to show you how we mount a calf skin, an unmounted calf skin, um, on a vintage Orpheum banjo pot. And if you watch the tape carefully and uh, follow the instructions, it's not really that much of a task. If you've done it a few times, it helps, but if you watch the video, we're going to show you today how to do that. Uh, the first thing I've done is I've got the old head. This happens to be an old Roger head, Roger's head, and I've taken a taken a razor blade and actually scored around the entire head to release the stretcher band, which we're going to reuse on this orphan. And we'll go ahead and take off the old head. Under that calf skin, once you use a razor blade, you find a brass ring. Now, if you don't have the brass ring, you can use another type of ring, which on the second video we'll show you later. So that's coming out pretty nicely right there. And then I see they've put some sort of backing tape on here. We're going to go ahead and take that off. Okay, I've removed the stretcher band and it's a nice brass square rod. And as you can see, uh, sometimes they're soldered, but this particular one is not soldered. So what we're going to do is just take a piece of masking tape mass that together so it forms one round ring and that way when it goes over the rim it will stay together better. Okay we've completely disassembled the uh, pot from the neck and what I'm going to do now is remove the majority of the hooks and just leaving four of the hooks on there. Uh, the less hooks you have when you start out, the easier it is to get the head started. Okay, we're taking all the hooks off the rim except for four hooks at each of the uh, corners. And this, this actually is a 12 inch pot and we're taking a, a raw calf skin and we've soaked it in a bucket of water for about 15 minutes and then we take it and we can actually wring it out and it will become very, very pliable. Now you've got to make sure that the calf skin that you're using is at least two, two inches longer on each of the sides. That's because when we go to tuck the head and pull it tight, you need excess head in order to pull it. So this is a 12-inch um, a pot, and if I've actually got a 20-inch head here, um, I could use uh, probably a 16 or an 18-inch head, and that would work just fine also. But uh, I just happen to have a 20-inch head, and that will give me a little extra room to uh, pull and tuck. I've laid the uh, wet head down on a flat surface and now I'm going to place the conic hoop or the stretcher band in the center of it and then take each part of the head and just kind of fold it over the conic hoop. If you haven't done this before, a lot of times it helps to have an extra set of hands. And right now, you just kind of want to get just a, a basic tuck. As you can see, it's kind of springing back, but that's okay. And that's how we first get started. I've got the, uh, the wet skin folded over the stretcher band. 
Now I'm going to take the rim, turn it over, center it the best I can on the counter hoop, and then I'll take, and I'll, this is what they refer to as tucking the head. I'm going to pull the pliable head. So the stretchy band is actually on the outside of the rim. I'm pulling the head in, trying to get some of the wrinkles out of it. And that looks pretty good right there. Okay, the head is um, actually initially tucked. I'm going to turn the part over. I've got four hooks here that we're going to use later to do our first tightening. Take, take the counter hoop, put the counter hoop over the head. I want to make sure that we put the counter hoop in the right position. And as you can see in this counter hoop right here, the solder joint is down at the back end, so we're going to line it up with the tail piece, so the tail piece will cover that solder joint. And then we're going to make sure it fits over the, over the rim, and that's fitting, that's fitting pretty good. Okay, I've got the um, stretcher band equally centered on the rim. I can feel that it's going to push down. There's still a few little wrinkles, but I'm not really worried about those right now. Put the stretcher beam back on here. Got it centered, tail piece. Going to press down a little bit. And then hopefully you'll have enough hook to come up, fit over the stretcher band. And we're going to have to finagle this one a little bit. And there you go. Okay, I've got the one bracket on. So I'm going to go on the other side. Place a bracket. Or through the bracket. Tighten it up and check it and make sure it's even. Got to be careful you don't torque it down too much because we still have to do some extra pulling to get the wrinkles out. Got to go over here on this side of it. Get this guy going. Okay, and then to the opposite end. We'll get this guy. On the hoop. Get a little pressure. And as you can see, we've got uh, one, two, three, four hooks on there. I'm checking again to make sure that I'm centered. I'm off a little bit. with the uh, tail piece. And then we're going to turn it over. And we're going to do the pulling part of the operation. And this is where you pull the wrinkles out. You want to take it and just give it a good strong grab around the entire interior of the part. I'm going to look up here and I see I got a little wrinkle going on there. So that part's got to be pulled. I'm going to pull that here with a pair of pliers. And that wrinkle just about came out. I'm going to do that. Got a little wrinkle going on over here. Pull that out.
right here, I tried to pull this through and I noticed there's a little wrinkle right there. So I'm gonna take the hook off and give it a little extra room. I put the other three hooks on there, so that's gonna hold it hold on pretty good. And then yank that through, kind of stretch it back and forth. And as you can see, I just got rid of that wrinkle right there. Put that hook back on. You want to do a perfect job getting all the wrinkles out. And it's kind of the skill behind getting ahead on. I've got another little wrinkle there, so I'm going to loosen this hook here a bit. Loosen this guy here. The head actually is drying a little bit, so it's starting to take shape already. To get those wrinkles out, sometimes you got to kind of pull back and forth. And that wrinkle right there just left. Like another wrinkle right here. Take that out. Pull it back and forth. There we go. Another one down here. Okay, I spent some time getting the wrinkles out, and as you can see in the inside, having this excess, the more excess that you have, the easier it is to grab and pull. And uh, if you look around the edge right here, everything looks real smooth. And got one little fold there, we'll fool around with that later. But everything looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do, I still have the counter hoop. Uh, really far off from the surface of the head. So I'm going to place hooks in between my other four hooks and get, no, get those tightened up. Okay, I put some more hooks on. Let me see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hooks. Um, and what I'm going to do now is look at the counter hoop and try to get that as level as possible with the hooks that I have on there. I see down over here I'm a little low, so I'm going to come over here, crank this one down a little bit. And you can look at the distance between the head and the edge of the counter hoop, and that will tell you how level that stretch of being a counter hoop is going on. You see right here I'm a little bit high. I'm going to crank that down. high over here, crank that down, little high over here, and now everything looks looks pretty level. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of the hooks. Okay, I've installed all the hooks, and again I'm checking to make sure that the counter hoop is level. What I've got to do now is to tighten it just enough so the counter hoop is just a little bit above where it's going to be when I do the final tightening. What's going to happen is this head is going to dry and as it dries it's going to stretch and get tighter. So the correct tension just through my experience I've found is if you leave maybe about an eighth of an inch of counter hoop space between the rim and the top of the counter hoop when you come back that extra eighth of an inch space that you can actually draw the counter hoop down will give you just the right amount of tension that you need so I'm going to tighten this I'm going to start here at the neck area give each one about three quarters return For those that haven't done much with tightening heads, this is actually the proper way to tighten the head. Where you look at that one later, you come around and go to the next one. Unlike the method of you would tighten a tire in a car, where you go opposite ends. And 
going to bring that down as I'm, I'm tightening. I'm checking to make sure that I'm pretty level. And I am so far. Right there. And I'm back around here where I started. Got to check. Make sure I'm level. That looks pretty good. As you can see right in here, I've got a little extra space. So tomorrow, when I let this sit overnight and dry, I'll have a little extra space to pull it on down. Normally, your counter hoop is flush with the plane of the head. So when the neck comes up against it, the counter hoop isn't sticking higher than the fingerboard on your neck. The next thing you need to do while it is wet is to trim the inside of the head. And this is where you have to be real careful because if you screw this up, you have to start all over. Um, what I've actually, what I use is a stainless steel scraper and I place the scraper, kind of tuck it inside there and take a very sharp razor blade. And this is where it gets a little tedious and cut as close to the inside of the rim as possible and this right here is going to indicate your skill it doesn't really make any difference as far as the performance of the head but if you get a nice clean cut it looks a lot nicer I'm going to work on that a while Okay, we've let it dry overnight, and you can see that the tension has increased quite a bit. We've cut the inside, and you can see we've cut very close to the edge, and it looks pretty good. The counter hoop, again, is a little higher than the head, and I can feel that it has just enough looseness in it that we can give it one final tightness. We're going to start. At the neck again, and give each one about a turn. We've also installed the armrest that was on it previously. Again, I'm checking here to make sure that the counter hoop is level of the head looks pretty good. And we're just about finished with this. And I'm looking right here and the kind of hoop here is pretty much level with the head. We may have to bring it down a little bit later and put the neck back on it. But that's pretty much a completed job right there. They come out real nice. You kind of feel the tension and it looks really good. So this part is pretty much re ready to reassemble on the neck. And that's the method of putting on a calfskin head on a 12-inch uh, part Orpheum.